Hey, it's me, Vicky Marie. And this was not supposed to be a live live. It was supposed to be, um, what do you call it? A premiere. It was supposed to be a premiere. And I pressed the wrong button or did the wrong thing. And before I knew it, I'd um, arranged, organised the live. So I thought, oh, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to play the video that I've prepared and as if I, that I was going to put out as a premiere. <clears throat> and it still means that I can chat with you guys. So I will watch the video together and I can chat with you guys in the chat. So that's good. So I'm not going to say much. I'm just looking on my computer. It says rain's coming. Rain's coming. We need some rain. It's actually really warm, so it, that seat feels right because, you know, it was freezing. Now it's warm, and um, maybe it is going to rain for that reason. So I've got my jumper on, but I'm actually really warm. But anyway, and it's Vicky Marie, true crime with a glass of wine tonight. I've had a really long day. I've done a lot of classes. My voice is a bit hoarse, which you can probably see because or hear because I've been chatting. Well, teaching. So, as I say, it was supposed to be a premiere, but I did the wrong thing. But um, I'm going to another Vicky. You've got another Vicky. Yeah, you've got, you're going to be seeing two Vickies tonight. So, I'll just say hello to everybody quick, and then I'm just going to go straight into the video. Let me just get the video ready, actually. For this part four of the question and answer session which i hope you found interesting because it's good to watch it again because um you know most of us watched it the first time and then it sort of disappeared so it's good to see it again think about uh you know as i say it's not a peter bashing session or a luke bashing session it's just uh assessing what was said thinking about it talking about it so let me find it. Oh, have I even downloaded it? Maybe I haven't downloaded it. That's strange. Right, hang on, I've just got to find it. You all chat between yourselves where I just find it and download it. If I haven't downloaded it, I don't think I can show it. There it is. Yeah, it's really quite well. I can see a couple. I just saw in the chat there that a couple of you were saying it's free. You're freezing wherever you are, but um, it's not cold here. It's warm, thank God. Oh well, I might as well say hello to you all then while I'm waiting because I was going to say hello to you in chat. But anyway, so hi, Mellow. Oh, you're getting here before Chumba these days. Hi, Daisy May. Hi, Tina. Hi, David. Uh, hi, Laurie. Hi. So it's Daisy May saying she's freezing cold, trying to st uh, stop from under the black. Oh, step out from under the blankets for a while so you can type properly. Is it that bad? Hi, Illy. The yeah, thing is, everyone's frightened to put the heating on, aren't they? Because of the bloody price of everything. Um, hi, Desi. Hi, Susan. Hi, Exotic Doll. Uh, Mara, you've never managed to catch one of my lives. Oh, well, welcome. I'm glad you're here. Hi, DMV. Hi, Rini. Another Vicky here. Yeah. Well, I'll try and hide. Oh, you've got, ah, you've got snow, Rini. Oh, my God. Hi, Yvonne. Hope you're okay. Hope you're feeling better. Hi, Linz. Hi, Jackie with a cute CQ. Hi, Heather. Oh, a lot of people arriving now. Uh, <laughs> Tweetle. <laughs> yeah, get your snacks out because this is, uh, you know, it's, it's getting to the whiskey point now. So it does get quite entertaining. But no, I don't like Twiglets either. In it. You know, which is funny because I actually love Marmite. I really do like Marmite, but I don't like Twiglets. So how do you work that out? Hi, Charlie. Uh, 
Mara said hello to hi Amanda Jane. Hi Sky. Uh -huh. Hi Selena, Selena. Hi Joe Amy. Right. Okay, so I should have downloaded the video by now, which means that I should be able to just put it on. So I, I recorded, this is one that I recorded earlier. And as I say, I was going to put it out as a premiere. I wasn't going to do, you know, a live live. Um, and, that, but, and then when I realised I'd programmed a live, I thought oh, I may as well leave it because otherwise it will get all complicated and I'll just play the video. Um, and then I was going to go on the avatar. And I know you don't really like going on the avatar. And then um, I thought, oh, well, because I am really tired. So, you know, it's been a long, long day. I only finished um, classes an hour ago. So, but here I am. And we are, I'm, all I'm going to do is I'm going to put the video, I mean, obviously, I'm going to chat with you guys in the chat. And I like doing, that's why I like doing premieres sometimes because um i like to be able to chat with you you know um so i will be able to do that hang on right so let's find it so i'm just going to put the video on and that'll be it off it will go uh but i can't the nice thing about doing a live and playing a pre-recorded video is that i can chat with you guys but also i can jump on if i want to as well which you can't do in the premiere you know you've just got to let the video play out and when it finishes it's finished you know, uh, whereas I am here. So, okay, let's have a look. There you go. You're going to have two Vickies unless I put hey, it probably better they do it like me, this. Vicky Marie. Ooh. And thanks for being here with me in this video. And it's Vicky Marie with a... I'll be quiet now and let the video carry on. So you can see I had a different jumper on earlier because it was freezing this morning. But as the day's gone on, and then I, I did my classes, went shopping, it was too warm for that jumper, so I changed it to this jumper. <laughs> so I've had, uh, I've had a pair of jumpers on today. But okay, let's just watch the video. Coffee today, and actually this is not my mug. My mug's in the washing up. This is my doggy mug, Wagmore Barkless, which my dogs would do. <laughs> Anyway, they do wag as well. They don't only bark their wag. So I just want to the family the very grateful. I said, well, well, sorry, I'm, I'm not having that. I'm, I'm just going to carry on. So we spoke to the family as well, and they told them they were coming. So he said, you meet me outside. I want to see your superintendent. This was a PC search advisor. And um, he, I said, I'll meet. He said, you meet me in a car park outside town in Abingdon. So I did. And he said, right, all turn around, go home. And I said, no, 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 we're not doing that. He said, I, I can't have amateurs diving. I said, uh, amateurs. I said, you know we are. And he said, I'm an ex-police diver. And he said, people like you took my job. I said, no, 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 your dive unit was closed. We don't even do your diving for you. And he said, well, you're not going to be diving. Well, this is illuminating, isn't it? So there, there, is there some sort of, this is what I was saying before in one of the other videos. It's like there's something deep-seated between the police and peter and is that telling what that guy said he was a police diver but can i just clear up something here yes i have got vino vino in my uh, golden goblet as david calls it but i will have whiskey at the burns night next week Sorry, I shouldn't interrupt the video. Peter took his job, he, he said. So, of course, that's not true. Peter didn't take his job. What will have happened is whatever police force he works for, uh, you know, we were talking about this in another video as well. The resources were caught and uh, the diving teams, the decision to cancel the diving teams will have been the crime commissioner of that particular area, uh, won't it? They decide where the money goes, I believe. But it, I'm just wondering if this is the deep-seated reason for the police's resentment towards Peter because, you know, they're telling him to go home. He's saying, no, I'm not going home. You know, it makes you wonder where all this started, all this animosity between them. 
And um, I said, well, I'm going to go down and see the family. He said, you go down there, I'll arrest you. I'll have you arrested. So I just told him to go forth and multiply. I had a suit and tie on at the time. My team were there on all the vans. And I drove down to the scene. And Do you see what I'm saying? So there's obviously some bad blood anyway between Peter and the police. Maybe not years ago, but thing, uh, I think perhaps in recent times, there's been this resentment. And so this case of Nicola was just at like, a, what's the word, uh, brought it to a head. As I walked towards the, the, um, the gate where the family were down by the river, police officer put his arm out. He said, you go any further, Mr. Falling, I'll arrest you. I said, well, please do. What, why, what, why can't I go in? He said, it's a crime scene. And again, exactly the same again. Show me a crime scene log, officer. And I said, you haven't got one, have you? He said, no. I said, do yourself a favour. Just step aside or you're going to be in big trouble. And he said, I'm, I really apologise. I was just giving orders. And he was fine. He shook my hand and I walked in. And um, I went down to the river that night. Um, the that won't have gone down well with the senior officers, will it? You know, I'm not, you know, taking sides. I'm just saying... <laughs> Uh, you know, probably, Peter was probably right to do that in a way, but uh, in another way, what happened? What happened to Met to ruin their relationship? Peter obviously has had a good relationship at one point. So this has answered a question that I had: was was he just having bad blood with Lancashire police? Doesn't seem like that, does it? It seems like other police forces. Maybe, as I say, this resentment may be there. The police still wouldn't let us dive. He got turned to a critical incident eight, about eight, eight o'clock that night. The family surrounded the car in a friendly way, not in threatening. They said and Darren was pleading, crying that my son's in the river. Let these guys dive. We did. And we recovered him 40 minutes later. He'd been missed. He'd been totally missed. They couldn't find him. And it's exactly the same story again. When uh, the same with Damien Tudge, the river was searched 12 times. They couldn't find him. We found oh. him in 10 minutes. But that. But I want to make it very clear. We then went on to become the official dive team for Thames Valley. So mistakes were made. It wasn't Thames Valley police who messed up. It was a couple of people who had ego problems, who didn't like us because it's ex-divers. And we... we so he's now, he's just saying, it's not Thames, Thames Valley Police's fault. It was just those couple of individuals within Thames Valley Police. It's very interesting, this, because uh, he found, um, you know, the, the poor guy. He found him and he said he'd been missed. So, you know, he's trying to liken it to the Nicola Bully thing, but... I don't think it's the same because he found him there, but this time he didn't, you know, Nicola was not found in the sense of actually um, brought up to the surface on that day. So we can't, until we see the sonar images or the sent to an expert, I can't accept that Nicola was there. I, you know, you need to see proof. And I don't, I say, I don't like the actions that Peter's done since. But this is interesting. So we can see where the bad blood comes from. But he's saying it's a couple of ego problems within the Thames Valley Police, not the Thames Valley Police in general. And now he's got a good relationship with the Thames Valley Police. So, hmm, you know, there's obviously sort of history here of some animosity, some bad blood, for whatever reason. We are not liked by the a lot of the police dive community. They don't want us because we're a private company. We do a good job. So they've tried to keep us out of the game for a long time. And I get bad-mouthed quite a lot by people um, within that community. Not all of them, but there's a yeah. few. And the thing is, what they don't realise, I'm older than them, they, they, don't, they haven't been around long enough to, to sort of talk me experience, you know? Um, we have better equipment and, and they don't like it. So that's it. That's It's an ego. Well, I've said from the beginning, this is a battle of egos. I said that right from the beginning. Uh, this is It just makes me so angry, not only with Peter, but with all of them. It's all about their ego. What about Nikki? You know, and yeah, if, you're, if that was your member, a member of your family, you would want anyone to go in there. You'd, you'd 
get Jacques Cousteau down there if you could because you just want your family member found and you don't want to get involved in the egos. You don't care about their egos. You just care about where is your loved one. So it's interesting this from Peter. You know, he's actually saying it's ego. So where is it going to go then? You know, where is it going to go? And um, what's going to happen in the end? We have to We have to wait. As, you know, since this Nicola Bully case even started, we've been waiting, haven't we always? It was wait for the inquest. Uh, well, there was, the, first of all, the wait for her to be found. Then there was the wait for the inquest wait for the um, independent, supposedly independent review. Initially, it was wait for the, f the first uh, investigation that was done into the uh, domestic, uh, you know, the welfare check incident. It's just, oh, wait for this, wait for that. Why? Why are you always having to wait? And this, again, is, you know, is what irritates me with Peter about waiting for the sonar images. And he's... You know, why has he not had them verified before now? We shouldn't be waiting for them. He's had months. He's had months to have them verified. And instead, he's shown them to quite a lot of people. But we still haven't had them verified properly. Problem. I will make that very clear. It's not about police officers in general. This is about a 2% of idiots who are just there to try and they don't want you around. That's what happened with Ellis Downs case, sadly. Uh, but then we went on and the same the, with Damien Tudge, he just couldn't be found. And they brought me in to research and I, I put a search strategy together and I found him within 10 minutes in the river in his car. Still, we, after 18 months, we recovered him. So lots of these cases where evidence we've come in and found, like the Lanharan mine shaft, 750 feet down in a flooded mine, I found a shotgun cartridge. It could never be found. So it's oh, wow. all things like this, you know, and um so we've got vast experience in this field and there's people in there who don't like what we do. Yeah, so that was it. I'm going to look into those cases. So we've got Elliot Downs and I think he said Richard Targe. Um, You know, must look into those uh, to see. Uh, you know, I know Peter has looked for other people and sometimes he hasn't found people. Um, Liam Graham recently didn't find him in the river and, and he, he somehow turned up in the Netherlands, but we don't really know the full story of that yet. But, um, yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? You do. And you'll see the trolls, you know, trolling, as you'll know, the trolls will go, this guy's talking rubbish. Well, if you've got a problem, come hey. and tell me, Come, you know where my office is, come and tell me to my face rather than be spineless <laughs> and do it with a blank face. Because I'm sure my team of ex-military guys will, would love to meet you. <laughs> yeah, that's like a bit of a veil threat again, isn't it, from him? And he's saying, no, tell me to your face, but then he blank he, um, blocks you on his social media before you've even said anything. So I certainly won't be trying to approach him and then get jumped on by a load of people. Um, you know, I'm just playing back his words. In my eyes, that's not trolling. If other people think it's trolling, that's up to them. But he made the question and answer session. These are his words and he has to stand by them. But that was a bit of a, you know, saying, oh, yeah, come come, tell me to my face. Come to my office. I've got a couple of military guys who are waiting to meet you. Oh, yeah, Peter, I'll, I'll be there tomorrow. <laughs> Bad man, Peter. Yeah, no, no, not that. No. It's not a threat. It's, it's basically, no, no. if you've got a problem, come and tell us to our face. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't do it beyond a keyboard. It's, a, it's, it's only coward. Only cowards do that. Yeah, tro 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 trolls make me stronger. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. Trolls make me stronger. So just I, I want to make that Finalist. clear. Trolls yeah, make me a lot fine. stronger, not weaker. Whiskey. I just want to um, say thank you to Hezzy. You know I've, I've just asked. I've just. He's getting a whiskey now. Now, I'm not dishing him for that. I mean, I don't blame him. Get a whiskey, but it does make him even more. You know, Peter's quite talkative at the best of times. Uh, and after he's had a few whiskies, he does get more talkative. Uh, so it probably wasn't a good idea. I mean, the thing is, you know, is he going? Is he trying to put himself out there professionally, or is he trying to put himself out there as the guy up the road who likes a whiskey and water? 
So, you know, if he wants to do, you know, that's fair enough, do it. But then don't be surprised when people notice it. Cause people, you know, I do it. I've had a wine on uh, a stream or whatever, and some people make a thing of it, you know, like complain about it. Other people are happy to have a drink with me or whatever. You know, you can't please everybody. So you just have, you know, I don't care if I want to have a drink, I'll have a drink. But uh, And the same for Peter. But then the... You can't, he's supposed to be, I don't know. Well, you'll let me know what you think about it. To me, I quite like that he had a whiskey because it made him seem more human and uh, he started smiling more, but he did get a bit loose lipped. Jill, um, yeah, I've just asked you to grab me a small whiskey and water. It's getting to that time of night, isn't it? So I, Why not? I, um, I need a whiskey and water. I'm going to have a bit of red after this. It's going to be a long night. Just, um, say thank you to Hezzy Bar. I hope I've got that right. Hezzy Bar, pink for Super Chat, and to uh, Civil. I think it's Civil for their Super Chat. Um, much appreciated. I just wanted to get that out there. I can't read them, but I can. Acknowledge them. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, is your whiskey coming? It will be in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Can the moderators please uh, just let people know that are asking questions here, like why I'm unable to answer other questions, please? I've said this a few times. I've, I did a live the other day to get the 50 questions. Otherwise, it's just going to go crazy in here. Please, if you read the description of the video, I have made that clear. And moderators, please, could you just let that be known? Um, you know, we are doing our best. Anyway, here. just like to say cheers, everybody. Oh, look, I've cheers. even got the engraved SGI glass here. So cheers. Yeah. Oh, there you go. It's got an engraved SGI glass. Uh, cheers, Peter. I've only got coffee this morning. If it would have been an evening video I was doing, I would have shared you in a wee dram. Cheers. Here's to the confirmation of the sonar images and the reopening of the Nicola Bully case. I've got water. Yes, first one I've had for the night anyway, so that's not bad. I've He's got wine. I've ten, got so. wine. Cheers. Hold on one second. Right, uh, right. Um, okay, no, where are we then? Right, 40. Right. Were you concerned about the findings from the inquest? I look, I don't. So they're on question 40. And, um, you know, I don't know why Pete said, oh, this is my first one of the night. He, he can have one at six o'clock if he wants. He's, he's his own person. Nobody, nobody's the whiskey police telling him what time he can have a drink or not. Or certainly not me. Uh, you know, whatever floats your boat. Don't, I can't comment on now Nicola died, and I never will. That's not my job. The, 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 the problem I have with the inquest is not allowing me to. He is funny, Peter, because he does always say, I can't comment on that. And then he goes on and comments, like, for ages. But because uh, he, he, he just can't help it. He does like to talk. So he reminds me of me a little bit because once he gets going, that's it. You can't stop him. Um, but, you know, uh, sometimes, especially with the whiskey, he does get a bit, uh, bit loose-lipped, let's say. But it does make it more entertaining. Present my evidence. Um, obviously, and the the PC Thackeray video where he said Nicola would have floated down the river and gone over the weir weir on day one, impossible. Mm. So there, that's interesting, isn't it? So he says he's not commenting on how Nicola died. That's not his job. Uh, but he's annoyed that he wasn't invited to the inquest, though he did not send his sonar images to the coroner until September. Um, and he's annoyed with PC Thackeray saying that Nicola could have gone over the weir on the first day. And he's saying that's impossible. I think that's impossible as well. I think if Nicola did go into the river, which I'm not still not convinced of, but if she did, she would have been right there. And I don't know why she wasn't found on the first day. So this is the crux of it, isn't it, for Peter, I think. It's not really what happened to Nicola or, uh, you know, uh, justice for Nicola. It's uh, his statement against the police's statement. So the police saying she could have gone over the weir on the first day, which 
doesn't make sense and him saying that he found her it was over a week later wasn't it so absolutely impossible and that can be tested at any time you a drowning victim she, she would have gone straight to the bottom or she may have struggled for a few meters you know while swimming trying to she's fallen in she's struggling and you may go down the river a bit but then you will go to the, once you take you couldn't swim in that river you know if, 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 if oh she may have swam down i don't think you could swim in that you know when we saw pc thackeray go in there he was paddling in it he wasn't swimming in it not in that bit anyway so not really you know i can't see that but you know things happen i'm not an expert but um just i've been there and i've looked down there and seen it you can see the bottom in that bit anyway near the bench maybe further down it's deeper you know still think that's not a river that you if you were going to do something to yourself i don't think that bit is where you would do it because it's not deep enough if i was thinking of doing something to myself and just looking down at that i'd just think oh god i'm going to just bang my head there and be lay there like injured you know would i would have feel that it would it would uh you know finish me off I mean, it's not exactly a popular spot for self-deletion, is it? Nobody's ever done it there before. And normally, you have places where, if it was self-deletion, uh, normally you have places where, you know, they're common places, aren't they, that people go to often to do it, like Beachy Head or the Erskine Bridge in Scotland. You know, they, they're notorious for people going and doing it. Well, that the River Weir isn't. The river wire isn't so now that makes me feel maybe she was pushed in there that's a possibility she could have been pushed in somebody pushing pushing her in not realizing then that she would get carried away or whatever but I still go back to the splash the well the absence of a splash um so yeah was she even ever there she was there eventually Take your gasps, you go to the bottom, and that's the that's fact. International, internationally uh, known fact. Yeah, Port yeah, and that's true. So you go down to the bottom. So why was she not found those first couple of days when you know it seemed like the the world and his dog was out, and literally the world and his dog was out there looking for her, and she was not found. But was she there? You won. Uh, how could? How could you tell from the sonar images that the target was female? Oh, well, <laughs> that's it's not as I've, I'm not going to be as brazen as that and say I can tell if someone's a female or a male. Um, she is quite as you you look at the back, it's very curvy on the bottom area and stuff like that. I'm not going to say I can tell a male or a female on a sonar image, but with this one, you can see you know, she's more curvature to it. But I'm not going to go and say I can tell a female on a male or like face. So if it was so clear, remember what Debbie Davis, the medium, said, you could see the head, the feet, the bottom, you could see everything he said. Did he not show those images? Like as soon as he went back and saw these images, when did he actually notice these images? That's what I'd like to know. What was the actual date, you know, the day that he noticed these images? Because remember, he was still saying, you know, he never said to anyone, oh, well, we did have one target, but the police checked that and it was uh, found to be nothing. He never, ever said that, you know. So, um, well, I want to know... You know these these bloody seminar images you sort of end up with this picture in your head like you know what do they look like is it like the bloody did you ever used to watch the saint and you'd have the stick man you know was it is if you feel like drawing a picture like that and saying oh here, here's nicola it's um until we see the images or get um, a proper expert opinion on the images an independent expert opinion on the images not a paramedic not two other police officers that he's told not the psychic that he's told not the two youtubers or somebody else was saying that he's shown quite other youtubers as well so where's the expert 
you know, how difficult it is it to send these images the same way he sent them to the other people, to an expert of his choosing. You know, he's poo-pooed the expert that the police sent them to and said he's not an expert. So why doesn't he send them to an expert he knows? He doesn't have to go to America to do that. You know, there are emails and what they sent all the, the other people. I mean, what's happened actually, one of the YouTubers that he sent them to is in America. So, you know, I just don't see why we haven't had this confirmation from an expert yet what's the delay it takes two minutes to send a whatsapp message you can't you can't tell that that's you know i couldn't and unless we're looking for another body in the river there's yeah. something else obviously but i'm not going to be that clever and say i can identify a female in the water with well, it, it would be quite the coincidence wouldn't it I, no you there wouldn't be another body there i mean yeah we know no no let's mm. let's be clear on that Okay. Um, now, I, I don't know if you would know the answer to this, but again, I'm asking the questions that people have asked. Um, did the condition of the body, I'm going to rephrase that. No, 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 I've got that right, sorry. Did the condition of the body look how it should for the amount of time that it was in the river? I don't look, know, I, you know that. I really don't want to go into conditions of bodies in water because this is a family this is about family and I, I i don't want to go down that route and i i know nothing about the body recovery and i really don't want to get into the it's not fair it's not nice to talk about um i i'll talk about the surge but i want to i don't really want to talk about, about all the fine detail and stuff like that it's it's not nice seeing dead people it's not a nice job so i i really don't want to go down that route so I, I I can't comment on conditions. I can, but I'm not going to. I don't know anything about conditions in this particular case, and I'd be wrong to say that. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough answer, Peter. Um, Forty three. Were you angry when you weren't allowed to dive your the target that you located? Angry. Well, I angry. Um, I suppose not. Angry is probably the wrong word. Um, well, I I wish that the police had identified the target that we gave them. Um, I wouldn't say angry because obviously they're good good divers. Police divers are highly trained divers. You know, it's an eight week course to become a police diver. It's a tough course. So I'm not going to knock the police divers here. Something's gone wrong on this case, clearly. But again, what I will say here, and this is what I stress to the College of Policing in my letter underwater search and it's very easy sitting in a chair at night with a glass of whiskey and talking about underwater if you imagine yourself being dumped into a a, a a tank of black water you see this these things done in the jungle and you think they're bad put yourself in a full face underwater in a black environment you cannot see anything at all often murky black water looking for a body it's not an easy job so I'm going to give a bit of credit here to police divers. It's not an easy job to do. And even in the college report, most... Well, it's not an easy job to do. I mean, it's a horrible job. Oh, God, I've thought that for years. I would hate to do that. The thought of going in water and, you, you know, looking for dead bodies. But, but um, he has shot himself in the foot a little bit, Peter, because... He keeps saying he's not criticising the police, but he is criticising the police. He is criticising the police. And and that makes me think that even if his uh, images are verified and, you know, it comes out that he was right all along, how is he going to go back to having a relationship with the police when he's, you know, they've dished him. I agree with that, but he's dished them as well. So I don't see how that's ever going to, he's never going to get that relationship back with the police unless you know there's a big change you can't see that the college of police and are just going to suddenly re re-embrace him can you but maybe who knows bodies are found by people floating to the surface yeah. so i'm not going to police bash i'm not going to knock the police dive team because they're highly trained divers it's be unfair to do that um it is a particularly different He's literally just dished PC Thackeray and said that what PC Thackeray said at the inquest was impossible. Difficult job. We just have better, and I can tell you now, we do have better sonar equipment without a doubt, and that's been confirmed. I do whatever they say. My sonar is bigger than your sonar.
I thought I'm sick of the word sonar. We are far superior. And it's not just about the sonar equipment. It's the experience. I've been doing sonar operations since 1999. I was the first ever to use it forensically. And that can be backed up by Professor Mark Harrison, MBE, who went out to work for the Australian Federal Police after, after he left here. Highly regarded man in search. He worked on, he worked on the, um, you know, the, the prior to lose job, you know, and, and all the big searches in the UK. Mark used to bring me in as a specialist to the prior deluge job, he means Madeleine McCann, but of course she was never found. Do sonar operation. Alison McGarrigal, all then, he would bring me in. Okay, so it's war, underwater search is extremely difficult and extremely harrowing work when you're literally putting your arm some on someone's shoulder underwater in, in the darkness. You imagine yeah. finding a dead body in a dark room on the floor, but you know you're underwater. It's not nice. No, so I want to make that very clear. It's not an easy job. Not many. That's right. It's not an easy job, and it's grateful to people like Peter and his team and the police. Mm. Don't forget, there is this. Why there's this them and us thing? Some something's happened to cause a, a rift here with Peter and the police because there was a time that Peter and the police were working well together. Whether it, and it seems like it wasn't just the Lancashire police. So maybe the foundation of it is this resentment towards him after the dive teams were cancelled which wasn't peter's fault but you know people look at things in a different way when it's affected them they look at peter's team as being the ones responsible for it which of course they're not responsible for it but uh you know i suppose uh, you could imagine that in a in a job any job where you're doing a certain thing and then suddenly they bring in an outside it's been really like if you think about nursing, you know, and uh, care work and things like that. They bring in a lot of temps and they get paid a lot better money. You know, uh, my friend's a manager of a care home or was. Uh, she's just uh, she's moved to another job now. But, um, you know, they have to take on a lot of temporary staff. So you've got your base staff that work there. And then when they're short staff, they bring in uh, people from agencies they earn a lot more money and just sort of come in and you know so there's resentment then with the stuff that they're earning a pittance normally if it's care work and then the the people come in from the temping agency earn a bloody fortune uh and there's a lot of resentment so i suppose it's a bit like that but of course it's not the fault of the people that are coming in like it's not peter's fault if the dive teams have been cancelled or whatever it's not his fault but I suppose there's obviously some sort of resentment there. People that would like to do it. No. Uh, how many experts are you going to be asking to get analysis uh, regards to the, your sonar images? I'm going to get two, I possibly three, but I know as soon as they see the images, um, they'll be hands down. I mean, I could show, if I showed... So he says he's going to get two uh, or possibly three uh, independent um, verifications of his images. That's what he just said. So just don't know why he hasn't done it already, but OK. If I took all the audience tonight, I'm not going to do it, but if I showed them all an image, I could guarantee that 98% of them would say, I can see the outline of the body. That's how confident I am. Well, you can't say it any more confidently than no. that, Peter. No. So we are now getting down to. Uh, uh, now, leave me a note. I'm not even going to comment on that. So he reckons if he shows, I'm doing a Peter now, I'm saying I'm not going to comment on it and I'm commenting on it. He reckons if he shows the image to to the audience, 98% of us will say, oh, yes, that's a body. Well, Debbie said it was very clearly uh, Nicola, didn't she? But um, uh, the other YouTuber is hanging on, making you wait to say what they think of it, even though they would have decided what they thought of it within sort of 30 seconds probably so maybe they're having it independently verified i don't know but uh, or maybe they're just keeping keeping people dangling to watch the next video uh you know the, all this waiting 
waiting. Oh, wait till the next one. Wait till the next episode. Oh, wait till I do this. Just do it. The final five questions. Um, oh, I've done, 50, I've done 51 by accident. So there's an extra one in here. <laughs> Not a bad thing. Uh, right. Something of, I don't know about this, but someone's asked it. Do you know anything about a search that was done after dark? No. You know what? No. I mean, look. The thing is, we no. Let, let me make it clear. There, there's been a lot of people online speculating about police doing covert searches at night time. Look, it's quite normal to do searches at night time. We a couple of years ago, we had a, a man who fell over the back of a fishing boat when his son was fishing with him, and he drowned. We got called in at one in the morning. You know. Uh, probably 11 at night to one in the morning um we eventually recovered his body so that we were working through you know in the night it's it's common for us to work in the night um diving in rivers is quite common we dive in the dark you know we we don't always use torches either we're just being oh that's interesting isn't it that'd be a very disagreeable job wouldn't it it's, it's bad enough in the daytime but in the dark and you don't I don't even like going in the sea, uh, not knowing what's in there. Um, yeah, and that's what put me off going in the sea, actually. We had a couple of bodies sort of uh, washed up on the beach, people that had been disposed of in drugs. Uh, well, they presume, you know, I don't know, the who knows? But people that were involved in, like, drugs, uh, gangs and things, and yeah, we had a little spate of bodies washing up on the shore and that's put me off ever going in the sea. They were all wrapped up and duct taped and everything, but just the thought of it, you know, it's not nice. So thank God, thank God somebody does this job. Thank God somebody does it like Peter's team or the police divers. Thank God for that. Feel around because once you're in a black environment, often the torch isn't much use. So you're literally following a line and just sweeping along with your arm until you touch the person Ooh. on a jack stay you're going up and on a grid sir so no it's it's quite normal i mean they got to throw all the resources and i'm saying I, they're probably kicking me but i'm i'm trying to give them a bit of credit here um and so yeah. you know it's a tough job and the firefighters do a wonderful job i mean the firefighters are all out all night greatest respect for the emergency services paramedics police firemen they're all brilliant you know i'm not knocking the cops i'm not knocking anyone they're all i work with these people and they're great people but like i said in any walk of life there's as i said i wrote about there's two two the two percent club as i call them in any in, in any job what you do there's two percent of idiots you know yeah and that's I've across said, the board i've said in the description of the video and at the start like this is this is not no, bash absolutely. No, no. And more, if no. people like if people want to do that, then like do it somewhere else because that's not what yeah. this is about. This is about you getting your story across and my, asking questions. My preferred route for all of this would be for the chief constable of Lancashire to personally invite me up to say, Peter, you know, it's all gone badly wrong here. Look, let's come and have a coffee. Let's all sit round and have a chat. Show us your images. You know, let's make it a friendly meeting. Let's all go up and get round the table and just have a seat. And let's hear you all. So don't forget, this is what Peter wants. He's, he's not, um, it's not about Nicola. It isn't. I'm sorry, with the best will in the world. It's not about solving what happened to Nicola or anything like that. This is all about Peter and the fact he feels like he's had his nose pushed out of joint because... Um, you know, he wants the chief constable. Well, you know, is there a God? They're changing like uh, chief constables, are, you know, just the chief constables and deputy chief constables at Lancashire. Maybe that's why they're being cleared out. Maybe they're going to put a chief constable in there that will have a chat with Peter. You know, who knows? Who knows what's going on here? Um, you know, it's. Your guess is as good. God, you'd like to know what was going on behind the scenes at Lancashire Police. Are these people leaving or are they? have they been pushed? And, of course, poor Peter Lawson, he died probably with the stress of it all. So I can't see that Lancashire Police are ever going to invite him up for a coffee. But you know what? They might, might they? Because they're changing. They're changing their... Um, their guard, if you like, 
So will they? Poor point of view, but no one's done that. So I feel like the enemy. And it's a bit like, you know, you just don't want to work like that. It's, it's a bit like if if you imagine yourself being pulled over by a, a police officer and he gets out there, or you, out the car. You know, whoa, hang on, you, you, you put, you're straight up, aren't you? But if, if someone says, excuse me, sir, um, you know, would you mind stepping out the car? Um, I just would like to search your boot or whatever. You go, yeah, sure, no problem at all. I've got no issues with that. Yeah. But it's how you approach people. And we've always, you know, even when the years ago digging protesters out, you always approach them in a nice manner. You smile because if you smile and you're friendly, you get a far better. It's like a, a yeah. Now this was another thing about Peter that was a bit because you know he he uh, he does protest removal and he'd help to remove the protesters from the Huntingdon Life Sciences, the horrible, uh, you know, animal um, where the beagles were abused terribly, probably still are. Um, and Peter had that up on his website as a, a badge of honour that he'd helped in that protest re removal. And then when it came out and was talked about, He's removed that. This is another thing that he's, I don't like this manipulation. He was proud of it at one point because it was there on his website. And now it's been removed as if it was never existed. A bit like this video. A traffic ward and slapping a ticket on. If you, if you get a double yellow line, then it's your own problem. But if they're friendly yeah. about it, you can actually go, yeah, fair cop, you got me. Just be nice. Just be nice to people, you well, know. Just well, too much. Way, it's too good way to live your life, isn't it? Be, yeah, be nice there's, to people. There's, there's, and, and I find that with animals, that's why animals relax me because you can trust yeah. animals, oh, and right. they make you happy, you know. So yeah, that's true. You know, there you go. Yeah, yeah they're beagles. Yeah, that's, it. yeah they're... that's a fair point. Um, right. Do Do you know? I don't know if you know the answer, but again, this is why we ask the questions. Do you know how many divers went in to search the target that you gave? So let me explain under health and safety. So we're commercial divers, okay? Um, and when you dive, you only have one diver in the water. It's, it's, it's against the rules to have two in there. So you have one diver and you have a diver on the bank as a, what they call a standby diver. So the dive standby will have his fins, his or her fins on. Uh, we got a lady diver. You will have all, all your kit on, uh, your hood on, apart from your mask, okay? And if the diver gets tangled up underwater, the standby will that call crash the standby. The diver will follow the line down and come and assist you underwater. So the diver who dived the target always, if you recover a body, you are on your own. You are down there on your own. There's no one with you. And that's what I'm saying. Underwater search and credit to the police <laughs> diver, it, it's a very difficult job. It's not nice. You yeah. are on your own with a dead person in the water, in the dark. That's pretty heavy, that. Yeah, it is. Okay, mm, it is. So, um, so it's it, it's one one diver that went in then. One diver, yeah. Okay, always. Right, we're getting down to the final one, two, three, four, got five. Um, how far will you take your findings until they are proven to be right? Well, I, I've to, I've told you, I'm, we are writing to the Home Secretary with the evidence in the new year, not the side of Christmas. There's too much going on at the moment. I mean, this is this has consumed my life for months, and I'm it's it drove driven me mad the way I've been treated. Yeah. Yeah, but why didn't why hasn't he already written to them? This, <laughs> you know, you know, this is my thing. So as soon as he was treated badly, he could have written to them. Then it worked, you know. By the time he's done this interview, it was around about Christmas time, wasn't it? it was coming up to Christmas, but um, he knew ages before. So I don't know why he didn't write to him immediately when that College of Policing review came out. And all I wanted to do is do a job. And I, I you know, I've been battered. I've been, you know, trashed. I've been discredited for no reason for a guy who's just done good for this country. Never get a thank you. It's I don't totally expect, backfired. I don't want a thank you. All I want is I just want truth to the family, really. And I want. Yeah, I don't think that's true, Peter. You don't want truth for the family. You want truth for you. You want it to be sorted for you. Why are the family not in touch with him anymore? What has gone on there? Why did they cut him off? Was he manipulated? 
you know, who knows? But um, yeah, people to admit their wrongs. Simple, like I would if that was me, and I, if we, you know, SGI got it wrong, then I go hands up. I'm sorry, everybody, and people respect that. But don't cover the truth up. Don't cover up that you thoroughly looked at the images when you haven't. I mean, I think the Home Secretary would be interested in this to find out that his review team have not reviewed the data properly. Do you see how this doesn't really make sense? I mean, he's saying the police haven't reviewed the data properly. Uh, but he's never, you know, he didn't review it for a long time. He's not mentioned it for ages. So anyway... Well, we're waiting. He said, in the new year, as I'm making this video, it's the 16th of January. It's still the new year. When does, you know, it's the new year for another 12 months. So, we, you know, we'll see. And then I was talking to the police officer yesterday, ex-police officer, senior police officer yesterday. And he said, this is unbelievable. You've got to bring this out. This is not right because it's tarring all the police around the UK, the shoddy. And they're not. They're not shoddy, you know. Most, 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 most of them do a very professional they job. They go to police officers go to work. They take some real flack. I wouldn't want to do it. Oh. You know, bottles thrown and punched in the face on a Friday night. You know, and they 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 all get tarnished with the same brush all the time by leaders who are getting it wrong. We need some good leaders. We need leaders. I lead my team at work and. You know, I, I will go with them on a job. I will lead from the front. That's why I was in the water that day, um, you know, on the sonar. It was freezing cold and we were working to do our job. Lead from the front, be there on the scene, go and meet the people, you know, drink coffee with them, make them coffee. And it's really important for team. He's got a real problem with his eye, isn't it? I hope his eye is okay. He can't leave his island. But, um... So, yeah, lead from the front. He, there he was in the boat. So, by mm, is he normally in the boat or does he just supervise from the shore, I wonder? Bonding. People need to work as a team. And a lot of jobs they go on, you never see half the time senior people coming down. It's sad, really, because they want a bit of support. The troops on the ground, the guys and the girls want some support sometimes, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so this one has been asked by a few people in various different kind of ways. Um, slightly loaded, but uh, yeah, well, you, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you'll I'm sure you'll understand. So, in hindsight, do you wish that you'd worded things differently when you <laughs> state when you stated this is after the 19th of February, by the way? Okay. Oh right. Okay. Okay. Let, yeah. me, let me finish the question, right? So in hindsight, do you wish you worded things differently when you stated you had since reviewed the sonar and Nicola was not there to later say upon review of the same data that she was there? Yeah, that's a very good question. That's a very good question. That's, I think, most of us question because he did say not only at the time, but many times afterwards that he had reviewed the data. He said that in the James English interview that he did. He specifically said he had reviewed the data and there was no sign of Nicola. Okay. Okay. A good question. So let me think. Work, let me explain. Right. There's two parts of this river. There's the non-tidal section above the weir. That's where the bench was. Non-tidal. And those who didn't join me earlier, so you got the... When you go to the seaside, every six hours, the tide goes in, it goes up. Excuse me. Depend on the moon states and times. So in the section where Nicola went missing, it was non-tidal, so it was hardly moving. It's just a river gently flowing down the river very slowly. I say I threw the stick and it didn't move and it goes over the weir. Then it goes into the tidal section where Nicola was eventually found, eventually found. So I, what I did, I was, when they, Nicola was found, obviously I was in for a lot of flack. So I, on my way home, we, I was getting the media call me and then I was getting beaten up in the media saying, you said this, you said that. Now, again, what I did, I looked at the, I said to, said to my wife, she can't be in that river because I searched that and she wasn't there. And I went back through all the data in the lower 
part of the river, the non, or sorry, the tidal section of the river where she was, where she was found. Eventually. And, but yeah, eventually found between the Weir and Cartford Bridge. And there was nothing there. And I, I reviewed it every, it's not even a target. There's nothing to see. It was clear. It was crystal. And when we went down to Cartford, I want to make this clear. When we got down to Cartford Bridge, we had to get out the boat because it was so shallow because the tide went out. So anybody in there would have been found weeks ago because it honestly, the search teams on the banks at the time. And when the tide drops, it literally goes down to pebbles. And that's been clarified by loads of people because they said how shallow the river is. And I said, yes, yes. Now, let's listen to this, what he says, because how's he going to now say, what's he going to say now that then he'd never looked before, at the other sonar again, but he decided, oh, yes, I'll, let me just check the bit by the bench. And, oh, there she was. She's, cat she's not in that part of the river. I've checked. Obviously, in the reeds, we can't search the reeds anyway. That's not she our job because I'm reeds. looking at a sonar. But she definitely wasn't on the bottom of the river. She wouldn't have been in the reeds because she would have been found by the search teams. And the sniffer dogs would have picked the scent up. And believe me, a decomposing body would definitely be picked up by a human very quickly. So that's right. what I mean by she wasn't in the river after mm -hmm. the ninth. So do you think he's answered that question? I don't think so. So when did he find this clear target? And, um, you know, don't forget when he went there, it was over a week that she'd been missing. So if, as uh, the coroner said, she had fallen into the river on that day, she would, you know, sorry to be graphic, but she would have been decomposing by then after a week. So the dogs would have been... I, I just don't believe she was in the river. That that's nobody has shown me or or said anything that makes me feel that she was there. Let's see what he goes on to say. See when the body was found. That is so that when, is the fact. So when so yeah so just, so when you when you said that you've re re reviewed the sonar. Yes. Are you referring to the location of where she was found on nineteenth? Yes. The lower part of the river, I reviewed because yeah. I said I knew well from the police divers. They said she wasn't in the top path. With our target was negative. There was no other targets there, so they said our target was negative up the top. Yeah, and then I said to my wife, "There's no way she was in the bottom." Of but Luke is asking him, "When did he review the sonar of the bit where he says she was?" So that's what he's asking. Let's see if he actually gets around to answering that. Luke's not us. Luke is trying to pin him down. To be fair, to when did he check the sonar that resulted in this image? Now that he's saying was her. Well, that river. And at that stage, I thought she had been put potentially dumped back in. That's what I thought because I it was right. Did. So yeah, it was right by a wall, and I'm talking about deposition sites, and. Yeah, and he did say this. This is a reminder. He did say this. He made the comment about the deposition site because it was near a wall. It was somewhere that she could have been put in. So he did say that. Uh, so come on, when did you actually find uh, the image that you're now saying is Nicola, Peter? Are you going to answer that? I don't, can't remember if he answered it or not. And the It was the perfect deposition site where you could be lifted out of a vehicle, thrown over the wall, and then into the river. Perfect place. That's then. That hasn't happened. So I want to make that clear. But that's what I thought at the time because the police divers dived their target. They said there's nothing here. Then I, I went, I mean, you imagine the flack that I took. I remember going on the Nick Ferrari show and I had to defend myself. And Nick said, Miss Folding, are you going to apologize to the? And I've, I've been on Nick's show. Like, I've got great respect for Nick. I mean, he was do, he's doing his job. And he said, are you going to apologize to the family now? I said, no, I'm not, because I haven't done anything wrong. I've done nothing wrong. All I've done is try to help a poor family. That's all I've done. He still hasn't said yet, Peter, when you saw the images that have resulted into, in what you're saying now. I've tried to do, like I've done so many times. Um, so... No, and then I got beaten up on another program, but on G GB News. But then Eamon Holmes actually defended me. He said, "You know, this is all about a missing lady." I said, "Yes, it is," and he was brilliant. Eamon was, but yeah, it's it, it's just like about the woman. doing the job, isn't it?
I think the thing is, there's a lot of women, women because Nicola was a woman and, uh, you know, I think women are perhaps, I don't know, a lot of women think Peter's great as well. Maybe I'm wrong, but that GB News interview that he's talking about, the, the woman, is it Isabel, is she called, or something that presents with uh, Eamon, she was quite scathing towards him. A few of the female um, uh, interviewers were, she was quite scathing towards him. Like, not scathing, but just saying, you know, are you going to admit now that, and he's like, no, he wouldn't admit he was wrong. And Eamon did defend him a little bit because, you know, Eamon's in that boys club. Um, you know, but I think a lot of women were like a little bit sort of perhaps felt it more personally. When you're a woman, but someone once on one of my comments said to me, oh, you know, why don't you talk about men in rivers? The thing is, I am a woman, so obviously I'm bound to gravitate towards stories about women in rivers more. That's just human nature. Uh, and I do report on men going missing as well. But this, you know, you, you feel an affinity more to, uh, you know, people who are like you, I suppose. That's just human nature. You know, I hold my hands up for that and maybe... Um, you know, it's up to some male YouTubers to maybe concentrate on men more, you know, I don't know, just putting that out there. But, um, you know, I do try to, if I, I have reported on males uh, who've disappeared or been found in rivers, etc. quite often. So don't always just report on women. But there is, you know, when you hear, especially if it's a woman, you know, around your own age or with similar, so, you know, a woman you can relate to. You know, that's just human nature. You're going to relate to people uh, that are like you. But, um, yeah, she did give him a hard time, that interviewer, but and he didn't like it, obviously, for him to be mentioning it on here. So he still hasn't answered, though, when he first saw these sonar images or first reviewed and found the target. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Top guy, top guy Eamon Holmes. He stand is. Up. He's. A, I've met a really lovely man. Really lovely. Man. Stand up, ge stand up, geezer. Um, he is. Yeah. Right. Three to go. Oh. Uh, so he he hasn't answered that, and that that he should have qualified that. Luke asked him, tried to pin him down to what the questions that uh, people had asked, which is when did really basically when did you first notice this target when you reviewed your data. Peter hasn't answered that at all. Would cold water shock cause heart damage? Right. Firstly, firstly, I'm not a doctor, but look, let's put it this way. I, I, I'm a, as you know, I, I fly my own helicopter. I'm a commercial diver. I have two medicals a year. Now, when I went to have my, um, it was quite funny. I went to have my aviation medical with uh, David Talent, who's in Hawley, and I went down there, and I. And I was busting for a wee at the time, desperate. And I went in the medical and I, I had to pee in a pot and then I held it back because they had to have me in there. And he, he, I laid on the bed and he'd done my blood pressure. And he said, oh, he said, your blood pressure is a bit high. He said, it's 170 over 90. You know, I said, OK. He said, I can't pass you on that. I said, do you know what, David? I, doc, I, need, I need to have a wee. I'm busting. He said, well, that, OK, then go and have a wee. So I went down, I drained my bladder, I came back. And he redone it, and it was one. It was one thirty-eight over, over ninety. It, it does make me laugh, Peter, because he goes into all these details. Uh, I think later, I don't know if we'll get to it in this one, but later he does say that's the longest we in history. So it's quite funny. It makes him human. He's. <laughs> Sorry, uh, they, yeah, you know, just stupid appeals to my sense of humour. Just it made me chuckle. It dropped. It was just because the pressure in my bladder was putting my blood pressure up, you know. So, um, hang on, where are we? Well, we're medical. Go on, go on. I went off on a tangent, then go on. It was yeah, well, they said because the whiskey's kicking in now. Luke uh, isn't listening to him, to be honest, it looks like. But uh, maybe like, Peter's really enjoying himself now. Now the whisk is kicking in. Quite funny. Um, what, your, what was the question? Sorry. <laughs> Stop drinking. Put your whiskey down. No, no, I'm fine. <laughs> it's weak. It's only water. Go on. There's only wood, wood. It was wood, cold water, shock, shock cold no, heart damage. Right. So, no, and th that's what I was getting on to. So David said to me that in the R, he was an RF doctor, and he said in the RF, we dunked a guy 
in ice, an ice tank, an ice tank. And uh, he said his blood pressure hit 400 and it was like, boom. I said, did it kill him? He said, no, it's fine. Of course it didn't. So you see the Marines doing the cold dunk when they do the Arctic trains documentary. Oh, yeah, listen, but Nicola died within 10 seconds in the River Weir, uh, in the River Wire. So, uh, you know, tells you a lot, doesn't it? On TV, really good one at the mountain about the Royal Marine selection. Really good. They jump into ice cold water with a lifeline on and they have to climb out. It doesn't kill them. So cold water shock what cold water shock does and what we find most drowning victims in the summer they run and jump into the water showing off in front of girls what most people do we've all done it and then they swim out as fast as they can about 100 meters and what they don't realize the water's really cold they haven't noticed how cold it is and then they get cold then the wow. muscles start to freeze up yeah the muscles yeah. then start to get froze. that's cold water shock so the ability to move your muscles is restricted. That's when you drown. So basically, he's totally uh, saying that what they said at the inquest is not true because they said it happened within 10 seconds. What he's saying is that people swim out and it gradually pervades into them, isn't he? That's what cold water shock is, according to Peter, which is completely at odds at what the um, experts said at the inquest when they said that uh, Nicola would have literally died in 10 seconds. It's just another example how everything's just skew if, isn't it, with this nothing adds up, he's saying one thing, they're saying another. Uh, you know, and I'm not criticising Peace for that, I'm just saying he's making his assertion, the inquest saying something else. That's why nobody is happy with any, none of the assertions seem to be seem to make sense or they're all disproved so quickly you know um and of course it's coming up to the anniversary of when uh nicola did disappear on the 27th of january and uh somebody was asking me if i'm going to do a live stream i don't even know what i'm, I'm going to do something on that day but i'm just not sure what because i can't go through all this timeline thing you know you get people are, are always on twitter daily you know, bickering about a minute here and a minute there and did this happen. What difference does it make? It just won't get anywhere. It just confuses everything. So I may look at that. That might be the day that I look at the conclusions of the police report and there, what they say the timeline was. Whatever timeline I talk about, somebody will come on and say, oh, well, here it said this or that. You know, there's so much dispute about the timeline um it just it's just a load of rubbish as far as i'm concerned nobody can prove any different just talk about it. you can talk about it till you're blue in the face nobody can prove anything different about the timeline so yeah maybe i'll do that i don't know exactly what i'm going to do on the 27th but i will be doing something it does well, okay because you can't because you can't physically swim yeah. anymore and that's wow. come from all the experts, you know, like the RNLI and everything like that, who the Royal Lifesavers Association and doctors. They don't suddenly jump in water and die of a heart attack. They drowned. But it's the inability to move, Luke. That's the problem. So they don't just suddenly join, uh, jump in the water and drown, he said. But that's exactly what they said happened at the inquest. Exactly. Though they say she fell in accidentally. You know, right, we've got two questions. I'm then going to run for a call of nature and then we will see where we're at uh, yeah, right. as to the timeline, how much time we've got, when yep. you want to go into it, we'll do all that. Good so, point. 50 or 51, because somehow it's become 51, but which is not a bad thing. Um, I don't know if this has been answered, but, but, but let's fire it out anyway. Should this case be looked at again? Well, I, I did answer it earlier, and I think you did. Look, look. Let's let's be fair here. The whole case does it, that. We can all beat up, try and beat up Lancashire Police. We can all try and beat up everybody. That not everyone's bad. Look, the amount of money an inquiry costs. You imagine like the Grenfell Tower public inquiry. You so yeah, I didn't like this when he said this. So is he saying there shouldn't have been an inquiry for the Grenfell, the Grenfell fire disaster, which was? foul what happened to those people 
trapped you know some of the things that i read you know people trapped in their homes and uh, messaging desperately for help and then finally not getting any i mean that i i actually i'm getting upset thinking about it because people and their pets and is he saying that they shouldn't have paid it shouldn't be an inquiry i don't know why he's bringing that oh look how much the grenfell inquiry costs yeah it should, whatever it cost if it cost twice that if it cost fucking 40 times that there should be an inquiry so what he, he what he's saying here this is something that i really didn't like that pete said it was like no they shouldn't because it cost too much money like no i want my jobs i want my reputation back i want my jobs from the police because i want the money but no don't spend the money on another inquiry uh so this is not a good thing that peter said definitely much how much a barrister cost look at the um the Manchester Arena bombing, how much that inquiry has cost. It's all Should about public inquiry inquiries. This is not in the public interest to have a, part, a full inquiry into this. It's not in the public interest. It's not. So all those people who now can't, all those women who are now terrified to go and walk their dogs near rivers because they don't know exactly what happened. It's not in the public interest. It's not in Peter's interest, obviously. This is does make me really angry um not in the public interest so he doesn't care about whether uh, what happened to nicola uh, um you know about finding out exactly what happened to her he just cares that his reputation is you know put right it's all about peter now this is where sometimes i agree with him but sometimes he just shows his true colors i don't like it because that money could go to the NHS or someone else, but where we badly need it. What we need is some honest truth here to look at the data and go, Oh, it could go to the NHS or somewhere where we badly need it. So not to Nicola, because we don't badly need that. And, uh, you know, uh, it's not in the public interest, but, but what we need is let's hear what we need. What do we need, Peter? Do you know what? We got it wrong. That's all. We got it wrong. But what we're going to do is move, now move forward and we're going to improve the way we search for people yeah. in water where you bring the right expertise, the right equipment in. And, and, and you know, like we, we've been to so many jobs. You just turn up. I mean, Surrey Fire call us in. Surrey Fire and Rescue call one after the other in the summertime. You know, we get I get my pager goes off at, you know, normally seven in the evening. Beep, beep team go in pick the dive trucks up person in water you get there you know they're not they're done load and rescue are there police are there firefighters are there we put our sonar out in the water and, and literally within 10 minutes i found them i then put my dive team in or my colleague Dun nathan will be on the sonar put the diver in and they've recovered within the hour always the way if we get called yeah so he's totally gone off that subject again he's just talking about how brilliant they are so note that those of you i know there's a lot of you out there that think peter folding is the best thing since sliced bread but please note what he just said not what i said he doesn't think there should be an inquiry it would cost too much money or what he wants is just searches to be improved in other words that he gets called in his team so he's not here for nicola He's not doing this for Nicola. He's doing it for himself. I think it's very important that you remember that. Whatever you think of Peter, and if, if you're okay with that and you square with that, but you still think he's like some sort of saint or God, then fine, because I'm not telling you what to think. I'm just saying, take note of what he said. He does not want another inquiry. That is from his words, his mouth, not mine. Whereas I personally would love another inquiry. You know, two weeks on, I got, I, I was asked to look at a job in Poland last week for a missing man. It's high profile at the moment. And I said, what's the guarantees in the river? And I, when did he go missing? Went missing in May. I said, no chance. He's probably gone a long way away. Probably gone yeah. miles down the river. So you just got to be honest and you, you just got to bring the best equipment the best resources and this is all about working as a team this is not about trying to annihilate people like me 
trying to discredit me and trying to be but you're what trying you're to doing. discredit the you police. Know, what you're doing here? Why is folding here? No, it's about Peter's coming along, SGI are here. We're working with them as a team to try and bring closure to this family. Yeah. That's all we're trying to do, Luke. Trying to bring closure. This is not about egos or police forces are better than us or we're better than them. We ain't about that. Because like I say, not. You said before it was about egos. Now he's saying it wasn't. What he's saying is it's not about his ego. No, it's everybody else's ego, but not him. No. Once have I tried to um, hammer the police during all my interviews I've done. I haven't. I've always spoken with great disrespect for the police officers. And I will continue to do that because I, I said I had, I had a friend around last week to dinner who was a police officer, you know, and his wife and kids. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you've got relationships with a lot of police of course officers. I have. I've got I've, I've been doing this so long. I had dinner, dinner a week and a half ago with a police, very senior police officer in London. I'm well connected with very, very senior people in the country that people wouldn't believe. He's very well connected with very, very senior people in the country that people would not believe. You know, many good friends in very high places who very. actually back me all the way and are encouraging me to do what I'm doing today. Believe me, because they want. So it'd be interesting to see what happens now that he's sent. Well, if he has, he said he was going to send off everything to the. Prime Minister, etc., uh, in the new year now, whether he's already done it or not, I don't know. He's, he keeps saying he's going to do it. He hasn't actually said anywhere I've seen that he has done it. So these fantastic connections that he's got that we wouldn't believe, let's see what happens. They want this rubbish sorted out because it can't go on happening. It can't go on happening. We're nearly at a thousand likes on this video. Yeah. Uh, some really nice comments. Um, the best live I've ever seen is one that I've just noticed, which is, uh, I appreciate that Sorry. Uh, very much. We're at question 51 of 50. Work that out. <laughs> Go on. I don't know. Right. Um, when you initially showed the target and then they came back to you, yeah. um, did they say what the shadows slash images were? Did they, what did they say that? The images right. were right. Hang on a minute. So, who are we talking about now? So, when you gave when you located the target on the seventh, yes, and you told the search teams, all right, what I done? What did they what say did. was you'd found? No, what I did, I I I got the target at ten thirty four that day on the seventh. I then done. I I asked my team. Again, the media would have seen it because we turned our boat around. And I said, Ollie, Ollie was on the helm, Chris was on the tow fish holding the cable. I said, big target here, right? Do me another, do me, get a bit closer, Ollie, do a figure of eight, go around and let's get some more, excuse me, images. And um, we got the other images. And then at 10.53, I WhatsApped it to the police search advisor and then called him as protocol, always do. Yeah. Not breaking any rules, not giving any information. I want to make this very clear. I never gave any operational information to the media at all. OK. Um, and then I he I asked, I said, we should put a diver in. We can dive it now. And he said, no, you're not to dive. We'll bring our team in. They're, they're far on another. So on another. Which is fair enough because he is a civilian. He wasn't brought in as a police thing. But now Luke has asked him again a very specific question. What did the police tell you uh, that the target was when they checked it? Let's see if he does get round to an answer. The task, which I believe they were down near the estuary, and they got there around probably one o'clock or whatever. Um, and then they dived the target. Um, and then... That was it. I gave them the target and they dived it. And but, but Luke has asked, what did they tell you was there? But I didn't watch the dive, but one of my divers watched the dive, one of my team, because he was land crew. There was three of us on the boat. And OK, now he's saying he didn't watch the dive. I personally would have watched the dive. I mean, sent you. I know he was trying to distract uh, the media, like you said, they were going on the boat so that the media didn't realise they were, you know, targeting a specific spot. But his, his team could have done that. 
I would have been, there's no way I wouldn't have been there to watch the dive. You found a top, what you think might be a target that's supposedly so clear, you know. I mean, surely if it was so clear, couldn't he see it on that sonar image as clear as what's he done to it since then that's made it clearer than it was on that original thing that he saw as he was, you know, going up and down? There's no way I would not have been there to see that dive. And he said it was a very quick dive. It wasn't even a jack stay search. It was very quick. So normally you would put a Why jack stay across the river or, and, or you would do a number of arc searches within the area. But they didn't do a number of arc searches. They were very, very quick to dive. So you've got, again, you need to understand that the GPS fix on the computer is your, your global positioning. Now, bearing in mind yeah. I'm a pilot, so I do understand GPS, uh, plus or minus <laughs> six meters. And then you've got the tow fish, which is the, on the end of the cables, this big missile. And you can always tell a good sonar system because you've got a big missile in the water. Yeah. That's hanging at the back of the boat. And then that's hanging in the water. And then that okay. sends the signal out. So the GPS is here at the front, but the tow fish is at the back. So the location. Another thing I just wanted to say, uh, you know, some people say oh the, the police didn't want to find Nicola they of course they wanted to find Nicola because they had said she was in the river all the time and that they would have loved to have found her and then people say oh they didn't want Peter Folding to find her I, I just don't believe that I don't believe that the police would deliberately have you know dove down and not checked properly I don't I don't believe it in my opinion some people believe that and that's fine that's your opinion but in my opinion I think the police, if they could have found her, they would have wanted to find her because they wanted to prove that their working hypothesis was correct. And it wouldn't matter if it had showed up first on Peter's sonar. They dove down to get her and they, uh, or to see if it was her. And I think if it was her, they would have found her. But, you know, I don't think we'll ever know, will we? We'll, ever, we'll never know unless we see these sonar images or some sonar expert ver verifies them. How will we ever know? Is it what is this smoke screen that's going on? It's deflecting from what actually happened to her. We're getting is actually at the front of the boat, one and a half to two meters in front. If it's deep water, the layback might be 10 meters of the cable. We might have 10 meters of cable out. It's all about trigonometry, 22 over seven. Yeah. So you've got to work out the depth of the water, and it's quite technical. But this is so shallow, we haven't got a deep tow fish. So it's so you're looking at really a 14 meter diameter to search yeah. realistically to do right the way round to clarify a target about 14 meters so from that's what we train that's why we train all the time so when i give my team the target or nathan gives them the target they know that they've got to search within sort of you know 10 to 14 meters either side you know right the way round it's a yeah. big area and that that's when it's found so basically what he's saying is um, they didn't look properly. He's also, he hasn't actually asked the question, which was what did the police tell you it was? So, so yeah, I get all that. I, I, might, I might have missed within that answer because I was just I'm looking at a couple of other things at the same time. Yeah. So, and that, when, they, when they first came back to tell you what the target was, yeah. did they say then it was nothing or it was branch? Yeah, so Luke, well done, Luke. He's trying to pin him down. No, there's then. nothing. No, they said it was nothing, nothing on, on the seven. Yes, yeah, it was nothing. That's what baffled me because. So, what accounts for the shadows and the, what no, shadows? No, what no, well, nothing. Exactly. I, look, look, let me make it clear to your audience. And I really appreciate everyone listening to me. I'm not, I'm not a liar. I'm not here for publicity. If I was here for publicity, I would have gone to a national newspaper and sold the images. I, I don't work like that. I don't need the money. I don't need the publicity. This is about the truth to come out for a damn good organisation who do a great job for many families around the UK and police forces around the UK. And we've sold lots. Well, that's maybe true. He doesn't need the money, but he, he um, and he could have sold the images to a national newspaper, but we still got to have them verified, Peter. It's the crimes that we've gone unsolved, OK? Let me make that very clear. We're very credible. I'm not some guy who's just come out the blue and started this. Do some background on me. Trouble is, whenever you Google me now, there's thousands of pages of Nicola Bully before you get to the yeah, other stuff. Yeah. And, and a lot of my work back in 99 
for all those youngsters here, you know, there was no internet then. So a lot of the stuff like Tobin, Alison and Garrigal would appear in a paper. But Yeah, a lot of the cases that he talks about, they are from quite a long time ago. We never, because again, we never spoke to the media that we might not be named that we were on the job. Like Tobin, people didn't even know that I was on the Tobin case until in the last few years when I've done podcasts about it with detectives and cry, you know, crime programs because they never thought that we searched the house and we did. So, yeah, there's lots of things here, um, but hopefully we can move forward. That's 50 questions, Peter. Okay. So I am just going to, again, and when I nip the toilet, I mean, yep. maybe maybe tell people what what you're doing for Christmas. You doing anything special? What are you having? Are you having a turkey? Are you having beef? What are you having? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to break there as well. That well, you know, finish that video there. There's we're nearly there. There's still 45 minutes left of this question and answer live. I hope you're finding it illuminating. It's good to look back over it again. Um, and hear Peter's answers, some of which, you know, I agree with him and other what things, as you can see, infuriate me. But, um, you know, and I'm entitled to my opinion, just like anybody else. So I don't want to dish. I think there's a, Peter's done a lot of good things, but there are some things um, that I don't like. And as you know, it's this about not wanting another investigation. But anyway, we'll look at that in the next video, if see if he goes on to say any more, because obviously this was a long time ago. I haven't watched this uh, for a couple of months, same as you probably, and so it's illuminating to go through it again. So until I see you again. Now, um, I'm still here, because of course I recorded that earlier, so uh, I am still here. But... Now, tomorrow night, I'm going to do the last bit, which, of course, is probably the most illuminating bit because the drunker Peter gets, he does get sort of more voluble and, and says a lot more. Now, so tomorrow night, I'll be doing... A, will it be alive? What day is it? Tomorrow, Wednesday. Sorry, I'm just thinking about what... Yeah, we will be alive. I can do it in a live. I think I'll do the same that I've done today. I'll prepare the video before it's been nice to watch the video and chat along with all of you you know um and i know there's a lot of different opinions there's a lot of different opinions in the chat and we have to be respectful of people's opinions because you know some of you think peter's fantastic some of you are not so sure about him some of you really don't like him and do you know what you you can all say that you can all say whatever you say as long as you don't you know, be nasty to other people, obviously, or to me. Don't be nasty to me either. Um, but you know what I'm saying. Everyone's entitled to say what they think happened, whether they think what they think of Peter, uh, whether it be good or bad, but be not too disrespectful of Peter. I mean, Peter has put himself out there and done this question and answer. It may have disappeared, but he did it because he wanted to do it. He knew it would, you know, it was public. It wasn't a private thing that he was doing. So, you know, he can't be surprised that people are, are critiquing it. And I hope I've, I've tried to be fair. I'm all, I always try to be fair. You know, there are things, um, as you've seen, that I don't like that Peter says, and there are things that I respect about things he's done, etc. But uh, I think this... this live question and answer it was a little bit like prince andrew in the interview he did you know it's just like it wasn't really a good idea it wasn't prepared properly and you know adam not criticizing peter for having a whiskey but at the end of the day he probably shouldn't have done that in this question and answer because then he got a bit loose lipped didn't he and that's when you start thinking oh that thing about the grenfell tower it just really got me because I felt like he was saying that there shouldn't have been an inquiry because it costs so much money. And he's saying there shouldn't be an inquiry, a reopening of the inquiry about Nick. So he said a lot of things that didn't do him any favours because he'd had a good few whiskies. Probably shouldn't have done that. Should have, you know, when he did the original interview with Luke, of course, that was all staged, wasn't it? Wherever it was, they were all dressed up all posh. And, you know, I presume it was done at 
either in a hotel or at Peter's house wasn't like the normal videos that Luke does sometimes with the towels in the background, etc. So maybe you should have thought about that with this video. It might have come over better, you know, just and and I said in a previous video, personally, I wouldn't have done it as a live. You know, you would have prepared the questions. And people, the thing is, people will always criticise you, whatever you do. You know, there will always be people that will agree with you or not agree with you. So you can't do it for other people. You have to do it what comes over more, what will stand the test of time. You know, if we were watching a more professional interview there, uh, there wouldn't be so many criticisms. You know, if you hadn't got loose lips, do, do you see what I'm saying? So I think that's probably why the video came down because it was realised. Um, you know, and there were good things in it. There were good things. Uh, Luke tried his best to sort of pin Peter down to some things that just didn't get pinned down. And we can, you know, we've learned that Peter likes a whiskey and he likes a chat. That doesn't make me dislike him. I'm, you know, I'm glad he's a human being. The things that make me dislike him, with a, I, I'm not saying that I do dislike him, but the things that would make me dislike him would be the things that said about Grenfell and, you know, about cost of everything. Everything's about, some things aren't about money. You know, some things are about principles and morals and what should be done. Sometimes things, you know, the money is incidental. You know, if the government has to make an it like the Manchester Arena bombing, of course they had to make an end quite. It doesn't matter how much it costs. You know, questions have to be asked. Things have to be, you know, and things should get better, not worse, by these processes. Anyway, so what I want, so I think we'll finish on something. Um, uh, um, sorry, I can't, I'm, I'm, I'm getting distracted by the chat. I can't read the chat at the moment. But I just want to make you laugh a little bit because, uh, you know, on the 25th, or so a week on Thursday, we're having a Burns night. Now, come on, send me your Scottish things. Now, I have received quite a few Scottish things, but not from all the Scottish people that I have on my chat. So I want tartans. I want kilts, I want any tamashanta hats, anything that is Scottish, send in, photos, uh, you know, anything. It doesn't even, you know, obviously people don't want to send in photos of their faces or whatever, but, you know, just send me anything Scottish, anything that I can include in the video that I'm going to do for the Burns Night. So I had a look. So just what made, well, say made me laugh. My God, it made me eyes water. I had a look on Amazon to see if I could find like a little, because I thought, well, if I, what am I going to do? Am I going to dress up as a, you know, in tartan or whatever? Or maybe I could find like a little doll or something with tartan. And so I went on Amazon to look for, to, let me see if I can find it, but I won't be able to find it now. And I found a lovely little Scottish doll. Which I'm going to show you if I can find it. Let me show you what I found on Amazon. Will it come up with the... I'll show you the thing I really wanted to get and why I didn't get it. Oh, God, it's not coming up now. Come on. Why is it not coming up? It never comes up when you want it to. Hang on. A lot of Highland cows came <laughs> Right, it's not coming up now, which is just typical. But let me tell you about it then. If I can't actually find it on here, I can tell you about it. It's got to come up, hasn't it? It's 
So I'm going to get some haggis. I'm going to get some whiskey. I am going to get all the things uh, we're going to do. Um, I'm going to do some poems like, uh, anyway, I'm going to do a proper Burns night. Well, say a proper Burns night, a proper virtual Burns night. And do you know what? I can't get this up here for some unknown reason. I found a Barbie, a Barbie, a Scottish Barbie on Amazon. And I thought, oh my God, that's brilliant. Um, it's not coming up now. Everything except that is coming up. I wonder if it's in my history. It's got to be in my history, hasn't it? Anyway, it doesn't matter. The what matters is it was 177 pounds. So I found this Barbie, this Scottish Barbie. She's got a little kilt on and a sash, and it's fantastic. And I just thought, oh my god, that's brilliant. I'm gonna get that. And I'm going to show that on the Burns Night Live. And then I looked at the price. It was £177. So I don't know if anybody, somebody must buy it, I suppose. I don't know. Do you think somebody's bought it? Mm -hmm. um, they must have done, I suppose. Having said that, now I can't find it. So, oh, here. What's this? Have I found it? Oh, Scottish Barbie second edition. Oh, I found it. Let me show you. Hi, Rio. Have you just finished work? Oh, right, I found it. I think I may have found it. There it is. Barbie Dolls of the World, Scotland. Oh, it's $166. I mean, it's fantastic. I would love it. I want it. I want it. But I'm not paying $166 for this Barbie. So I think what I'm going to have to do is go up the Chinese shop and see if I can find this outfit. Maybe I, I mean, I won't look like that in it. But maybe I should wear this outfit. I need a long red haired wig. Gosh, I haven't worn a wig for ages. A little Tam O'Shanta hat. Yeah, Barbie Dolls of the World, Scotland, in the Barbie store. So what do you think about that? It's good. It's brilliant. I would love one. Maybe I should start collecting Barbie. Now, this is a new one. Oh, that says it's only $34.50. Oh. Well, that's a bit more like it, isn't it? $34, which is around about uh, probably the same in euros. It's a similar amount, maybe 30 euros. You've got the Wilbur Highland Cow. <laughs> oh, God, I'm feeling all Scottish now because I am a quarter Scottish. I'm a Hamilton. This is a 1981. So there you go, Barbie. There's a Barbie, a Scottish Barbie. But I'm not paying 170 euros for it, but I might pay 30 euros for it. Though that's still quite a lot, isn't it? I suppose. But Barbies are quite expensive, aren't they? Do I know what? Uh, <laughs> I know quite because I had a Scottish boyfriend for quite a long time. Bye, Mel. So I know a little bit, uh, what was a maku? I don't know what a maku is. I know what a, a simit is. That's a vest, isn't it? A simit. Um, I know, what's the other words that I know? Oh, loads. Uh, when you go for your messages, when you go shopping, they call it going for messages, don't they? Going out to do your errands or whatever. Oh, what's that word for chatting? There's a special word that they have for chatting. 
So yeah, I'm get. Uh, I've got to look it all up for the Burns night. <laughs> so everyone's going to be wearing their kilts, tossing their cable. You know. No, Chumba, there's another word. Bleathering, that's it, Sky. Bleathering, having a blether. That's a Scottish expression, isn't it? So I could be Vicky Marie Bleathers. Ah, I said, that's what I'm going to be. On uh, Burns Night, I'm going to be Vicky Marie Bleathers instead of Vicky Marie Chats. Do you, do you think Peter would be interested with his whiskey coming on for a blether? Come on, Peter, come and have a blether. He likes a blether. That's it, blethering. That's the thing. And get Peter on and we'll have a blether together. Oh, dear me. Yeah. Who's oh. it? Hamilton. A berry. I'm going to. A Jimmy wig, Susan. I'm going to get a Jimmy wig, yeah. I'm Scottish and Irish ancestry as well, Charlie. Dickhead. <laughs> yeah, Tonic's um, tea cakes, mellow. Yeah. What's the other thing? So, um, oh, I mean, there's loads of things, aren't there, that are traditionally Scottish at the end of the day. And it's a beautiful country. And I'm looking for, I'm going to read some poetry out. Uh, some Rabbi Burns poetry, etc. I'm really looking forward to it, actually, because you know what we do. We've not had a laugh now since um, New Year, have we? So we're now on the 16th of January, and the last time we had a proper laugh. I mean, we do have a laugh, obviously, but like a party. We had a good party on New Year. We do another party, so we're having our party next Thursday. Not tomorrow. So we have got members live tomorrow night. Oh, no, no, we haven't. So tomorrow night is Wednesday. Oh, God, I still don't know what day it is. Tomorrow night is Wednesday. Tomorrow night we'll have the final part of the question and answer. And then Thursday night is members live. And we're going to, we'll have some fun. I, don't, I can't even remember. I have got something planned, but I can't remember what it is. And uh, then next Thursday on the 25th, uh will be the burns night and that is normally members only but it won't be members only on that night we'll do our members only on a different night maybe on the wednesday or whatever because the thursday night the burns night will be a party for everyone so and then of course we'll be coming up to the 27th which will be a saturday won't it this year and um you know that'll be sort of poignant won't it because that'll be the twin and what I do that day, I don't know yet. I will be doing something I don't know yet. We'll see. Peter might have, you know, had, there might be more information come out about Peter's sonar images by then. You never know. So there might be, who knows what will have happened by then, what will have come out by then. So, but I will be doing something. Okay, I am blad I'm blethering on now. I'm blethering on. <sighs> DW Bull, I think that Donald Trump wishes he was Scottish, doesn't he? He loves Scotland. Anyone who likes golf will love Scotland. St Andrews is a fabulous place, isn't it? I've been there. It's so beautiful. So beautiful. So precious. I can see. I hate golf. I have no interest in golf whatsoever. But St Andrews is, I think that's one of the nicest places I've ever been to as well. So. Oh, square sausage, that's right, Bridget. That lawn sausage, that's a Scottish thing, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm going to do the wee timorous beastie. That'll be a poem that I'll be doing. Um... <laughs> Look, I'm reading, I'm reading the, um, the chat. Yeah, after the 27th, David, I'm definitely changing the topic because it's just not getting anywhere. But anyway, we'll, but after the 27th, because that will be a year anniversary. So, Donald, where's your trousers? <laughs> oh, Rapsy Nesbitt, yeah, he was so funny. Yeah. So, 
Okay, I'm definitely going. I'm getting on the... Um, I'm tired. I'm tired. Estoy cansada. I am tired. Um, I can't speak Scottish, but I can speak Spanish. <laughs> Uh, okay, so remember to live and love very wisely, very carefully. If you fancy a little wee dram of whiskey, you know, go ahead and have one. But say it all, save it for next Thursday, a week on Thursday when we have the Burns night. Pink is my favourite colour, Kelly. Thank you. Okay. Adios, bye, and may your God go with you and look after you. Adios. <laughs>